by definition the transportation problem is that in which we are basically finding the minimum cost of transportation of a single commodity from a given number of sources that is factories to a given number of destination that is warehouses so we have a factory at a we have a factory at b and we have a factory at c let's say we have a production of 500 units of a certain commodity 200 units at this commodity and 300 units at this commodity so total production we are having a say commodity equals to 1000 to transfer this to warehouse 1 warehouse 2 warehouse 3 warehouse 4 so it is not compulsory that the numbers of factories and number of warehouses are same but what we produce here must be supplied to this one and according to their requirements region wise their requirements will be different requirements let's say the requirement of this one is 400 units requirement at this point is 150 units requirement at this point is 250 units so this is 250 this is 150 is 400 400 so this equals to 200 so we have a certain uh, atom to be produced in this plant and has to be shifted from warehouse factory A to W1 to W3. Now if we move from A to B, depending upon the route, it has a certain cost. Let's say the cost of per unit is rupees 4. And if we shift from A to this, our cost is rupees 3. If we shift from this one, we have a cost equals to 2. Likewise, we have a complete cost matrix of 6. Similarly, we can shift this item from B to this also. But this time the cost involved is 3 rupees. For this one is cost involved is 5 rupees, 8 rupees. Likewise, I can show you the cost involved from C to A. My idea is that how much item should I move from A to different sources so that the demand and the supply must be same. So this one is demand and this one is supply. But while do this, I require the cost of operation should be as minimum as possible. So objective of the transportation problem is to minimize the cost of the unit shifted from A, B, C to warehouse W1, W2, W3 and W4. So transportation model is a matrix of rectangular size. It can have any number of rows or any number of columns. Let's say the demand for A is 200 units, demand for B is 200 units, for C is 300 units. Whereas the unit 1 can produce the maximum quantity equals to 300, B can produce, unit 2 can produce maximum quantity equal to 300 and the third unit can produce maximum quantity equal to 100. So we have to make the arrangement like this, we have to make a one year one empty cell. All these green cells represent the cost of transportation per unit. It is known that if I shift from 1 to A, cost involved is rupees 4 per item. If I shift from 1 to B, my cost involved is rupees 3. From 1 to C, the cost involved is rupees 8. From 2 to A, the cost 7. Likewise, we have different cost. So this quantity represents SI. So this one is S1, this one is S2, this one is S3. SI represents the supply. So what is the total supply? Total supply is SI which is equals to S1 plus S2 plus S3. This, this supply is 300 plus 300 that equal to 700. Here DJ demands at destination so this one is d1 this one is d2 and this one is d3 so total demand is di equals to d1 plus d2 plus d equals to 200 plus 200 plus 300 so that also equals to what 700 the total supply is equals to total demand the problem is called balanced transportation if the supply is more 
than demand or the total demand is more than the total supply. If you have this case, it is called as unbalanced transportation. The first step is that you have to convert unbalanced problem into balanced problem by adding extra column, any column. And in this situation, you have to add extra row that is called as dummy row, any cost. It is just to balance summation of sigma si and summation of sigma di. That is supply must equal to what? Demand. That is why we are adjusting one extra column or one extra row depending upon the situation. The solution is prepared in two steps. First solution is initial basic feasible solution. The solution can be obtained in two steps. In first step you obtain initial basic feasible solution and then once you obtain the initial basic feasible solution then you go for optimal solution. To how you check the initial basic feasible solution? So if M represents the number of rows, N represents the number of column, minus 1 must equals to occupied cell. Any allocations you are making in this cell, if that number is equal to M plus N minus 1. For present case, how many number of rows? 3. How many number of columns? 3. Minus 1. It means that what? 5. So minimum 5 cells you have to allocate. If you allocate 5 cells, then you can go for solution. Initial basic feasible solution can be obtained by the first method is the simplest method called as north west. The second method is low cost method. Third one is VAM method called as Vogel approximation. So you can use these three methods just to check that the condition is satisfied or not that is M plus n minus 1 equals to occupied cell. The solution is not always a final solution. It's just check the condition that allocation is equals to m plus n minus 1. Once you've done this, then the optimal solution is prepared by two methods. One is modified distribution method, stepping stone method. Modified distribution method. And second is called as stepping stone method. Okay, so you have two procedure. One is by either Modi method or either by stepping stone method. Step number one: start by selecting the cell in the most northwest corner of the table. Once you occupy that cell, assign the maximum amount to this cell. If you have more value of demand, you can go for supply. If which one is minimum, you allocate it. Whether it's a demand or whether it's a supply, and then cancel that row or cancel that column and then move to the next north corner row. So go on finishing your row first. If your first row is exhausted, then go to the second row. Then go to the third row. According to the rule number four, exhaust the requirement from each column. Moving right to the another column. In the column you have to move from left and row you have to move downward. Make sure the supply and demand that are met. First step is that check this cross. This sum is 700 and this sum is also 700. So this one is balanced transportation. So we will not add any dummy column or any dummy row. First is start by selecting the cell in the most northwest corner. So this cell for demand 200. Check for supply 300. This is lower value. So allocate this 200. As soon as you allocate this subtract from this one 200 right 100 and then make a cross on this one so that there will be no entry now then you have to move in the row you have to go by row first then you have to go by column so next row row is this one what is the maximum requirement 200 but how much is available 100 so can we allocate 100 so we can allocate 100 so this will be reduced by 100 cancel plant one line now with reference to this unoccupied cell this one is 
sir. How much is the capacity required? Hundred. But how much is the production with me? Three hundred. So can I meet this requirement? So this value is lower. So hundred is allotted. This is finish. But is this quantity left is two hundred? So the column is overcome. I required here three hundred quantity, and you need to. I have to go first row. I cannot move downward. See the rule number. See the rule number three. Each row must be completed. Then only we will move the rule. Row number three. So row number here, two hundred, three hundred. So can I supply two hundred? Demand required left is hundred, but the plant number two capacity is completely exhausted. And finally, we left with hundred, and we want hundred. So this one is hundred. Step number five we are going to check now. In the column A, demand is two hundred. In the column B, demand is two hundred. In the column C, demand is three hundred. Check the supply also. Two hundred plus hundred, three hundred. Hundred plus two hundred, three hundred. And hundred. So all steps are complete. Next in all these, two hundred items at a rate of four. Hundred items at a rate of three. Hundred items at a rate of five. Two hundred items at a rate of and hundred items at a rate of five. If we follow the northwest corner rule, your cost is. How many number of columns? Five cells. One, two, four, and five. So occupied cells. Now check. M plus N. Three plus three minus one. That equal to what? Five. And is this number is same as occupied? So this is the initial, basic, feasible solution. Okay, we take another example. A, B, C are the three warehouses, and one, two, three are three factories. The cost involved are like this: three. Atom producer are fifty, seventy, and ninety. Unit number one producing fifty. This one producing seventy, and third number will produce ninety. The requirement is forty. Let's try this problem. So step number one, you check demand is equal to supply. The total supply must equal to total demand. That is why we are not going to add any number of dummy row or dummy column. We will solve this problem by northwest rule. Basic feasible solution. Let's start with 40 is minimum. Minimum. So this is cancel out. This is 10 left. Now cancel the first column. Then move to the second column. Allocate. Maximum. What is the requirement? Sixty. But how much production is left? Ten. So at the most we can give ten. So this left equal to fifty. Now row number one exhausted. Now we want fifty and uh, available quantity seventy. So can we meet fifty? We can meet fifty. So twenty is left. This fifty is exhausted. So cancel second column. Go to the same row first. We have twenty production, twenty available. Our requirement is hundred and ten. So can we give the supply of twenty? So how much is left? Ninety. Our requirement is ninety and supply is also ninety. So this is fulfilled. Number of rows is equals to three. Number of columns is also three. So M plus N minus one. Is five. The how many cells are occupied? One, two, three, four, and five. Cost doesn't matter. So is it a initial basic feasible solution? And next we'll go for cost of this. So cost of forty into forty atom are shifted at the rate of three. Ten atoms are shifted at the rate of two. 50 items are shifted at the rate of 5 20 items are shifted at the rate of 3 and 90 items are shifted at the rate of 2 so let's solve this problem by initial basic feasible solution the total supply is and total demand is also 10 plus 15 plus 12 plus 15 is 52 so this one is balanced transportation let's start with the first column and first row our available capacity is 14 and our demand is 10 so we can fulfill this demand 
So this will be cancelled. Left quantity is 4. So first strike out column 1. In the second first row, that is this cell, we have a availability equal to 4. So this 4 will cancel out. 4 are allocated. So out of 15, 4 are allocated. It means that 11 is left. Now this time, our capacity of plant 1 is exhausted in the second column and in empty cell we have 11 number here and available capacity is 10 so can we fulfill 11 or we can fill maximum 10 so we can fill maximum 10 so how much is left one is still left but because of this one row number 2 is completely exhausted so that is why we are moving to row number 3 now in the same column. How much is left? 1 is left. So we will allocate 1 here and then 14 is left. Now by this time is the column 2 is completely allocated. And now therefore we will go to column number 3. So column number 3 at this point. What is the requirement? 12. What is the available capacity? 14. So can we meet the requirement? So this will be equals to 12. Strike out. How much is left? 2. So can we strike out column number? And finally, 2 is left. So 2 will be allocated here. And 13 is allocated here. That finish the assignment. 4. Number of columns? 4. So M plus N minus 1 is 7. Let's check occupied cell. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So this is same as number of occupied cell. So cost will be 10 multiplied by 10 plus 4 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 15 multiplied by 45. This cost is a northwest corner rule.